Joe, let's now put you under the spotlight a bit more. Obviously, off to Paris, play for Stade Francais next season. Yep. Decision. Well, f- first things first, how did it come about? Well, it was just, it was a bit of a um, out of the blue kind of thing, to be honest, where um, I spoke to my agent and he was like, we've had an offer uh, from Stad, And obviously I, I knew Guzzi from, from when he was at Quinn's anyway. Um, we messaged and stuff and it was just like about coming over, like just checking out, seeing what it's like. Um, and like I said to the club, I was like, I'd love to, I'd love to stay um, and everything. But obviously the way the kind of salary cap is, it was like, well, can't really, we can't really keep everyone. And, and without going into it too much, it was like, it was just one of those ones where I couldn't really stay. Um, like 26, I'm hopefully coming into, hopefully coming to like my prime and stuff like that. And it's not really the time to be, to be like settling for to less for less. So I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna have to do this. Um, and it's, I'm really excited. I think it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a, it's a great opportunity, and I'm really pleased that they, that I obviously got the opportunity to do it. Um, like going to a new city as well, um, having to learn to speak French, um, which I, you know, when you're at school and you're like, I don't need, I don't need to speak French. Blah, blah. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, I wish I, oh, I really yeah, wish really. I'd done that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited about it. So yeah, it was a decision you took when Eddie Jones was still in charge and he shunned you a little bit in that sort of, in in that time period. Now he's finally gone. Has that, did that play a big part in your decision? Or do you, is there any, are there any regrets? Uh, it didn't play the part which I think everyone thought it did. Um, obviously I wasn't in the mix at the time, so I was like, but um, it's just, it's just the way it is. Uh, I'm not really in the mix at the time. I knew, everyone knew like, that he was leaving after the World Cup anyway, so it wouldn't have affected um, me going afterwards but yeah it was just uh, I just was like right obviously want to do something do something new do something different and you know like it's uh, I'll be there for a couple of years and then if if the rules change obviously it'd be great because I'll still be able to play for England but if they don't then hopefully I'll be able to um, come back one day and maybe play for England again so it could just be it could be a great thing just to get out of the uh, the the premiership and and the England kind of ordering of things and go away do something different come back a better player and and see where we're at in a couple of years. We've had different stories of of Eddie Jones and and his at times terrifying and crazy ways. Was there anything in particular that stood out for you during your time under him? Um, what's that smile? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's that smile? We've, no. Trust me, we've had every, we've had every single way of, of things that he's got up to. No, I um I won't go into it too much, but now we um it was just a bit of a roller coaster to be honest. Like I felt like I was just like I was in and out the squad quite a lot. It was just very up and down. Let's just say that it was it was yeah, the the salmon games. skin roll. Yeah. Sam- um, <laughs> um, and it was a weird one, but but you know like what it's was one your of those. nickname? Um, I had a couple. What did I have? Uh, oh, Sleepy was one. Oh no! Um, that wasn't to be, to be honest. That wasn't too bad. I actually came from a weird one. Um, something to do with Joe Biden or something. I don't oh, really Sleepy know. Joe Biden. Yeah. And then there was a song called like Sleepy Joe's Cafe or something. So we'd just be there, like start of a meeting, and he'd just just press play and just have it playing. I'd be there, like, and it was like we had to do that for a few meetings and stuff like that. But like I'd play play for a couple of games, and I was like, absolutely buzzing to be playing for England, and then. Out the squad completely, and it's just um, yeah, it's a tough one to to get over. He's but. gone, mate. You, you, don't, yeah. you, don't have to you, you never know. You never, you never know. know. Yeah, yeah, people are so scared. You never know. There's no way, surely. <laughs> no bloody way, surely. <laughs> Did you think you were treated badly by him? No, I think. I think this what? is tough. No, 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 no. It's not like no, no. It's not trying to get you to. It's it's just you know the fact that he's not around. It's. And he's on the other side of the world, and you, you know, it's a new coaching team, and it's a new setup, and everything. From your perspective, you know, is it is it a better experience for you that he's not around anymore? Yeah, I, like I've been in the mix for like consistently, which for me, like when I spoke to Steve when we first went in, I obviously spoke about like going in and out and stuff like that, and I was like, I I love being in the mix, and I I want to play for England every week. And when I spoke to Steve and stuff, he was like, I I. I I love how you are around the boys. Like you obviously train hard every day, and those are the things that I value and stuff like that. So yeah, I felt like it was just a lot more balanced, and that they were just like um, he was a lot more just um, understanding of of how being in in the group consistently makes you better and feel like part of the group. Yeah, so. he doesn't play as much mind games by the sounds of it. Like I reckon Eddie would have had you in and out, in and out, and then trying to test you in certain ways, and yeah, just. 
It's I, fucking tiring, eh? Yeah, I think it drains I, you. I think Eddie he does as he's he does a lot of things to because he wants to get the best out of players. And what he said a lot was that he just wants to see me at my best. And he thought that like sending me away or or get me out of camp would give me that drive and that hunger to be better and want to be in the group and and stuff like that. Same with training, like coming into a training session after we've not been in for a while. I think he was like, that's going to really give him give him the drive. But as I said, Steve, I want to play for England. Like, I love playing rugby. Like, I, I do play rugby with a smile on my face and I enjoy it. Like, you can see week in, week out when I play for Quinns. Like, it does, yeah, people can look and be like, um, oh, it looks like he's not taking it seriously, but that's not the case. I'm just in it and I'm playing with my friends and I'm just, just having a great time, but I'm still working really hard for, for the boys um, all to get the win. So, yeah. That is the Quinns way. Like, the boys... Mm. Have good crack, like Hugh Jones, who's obviously up at Glasgow with me. Yeah, loved it. It was like it was such a good place for some of his best years playing rugby. Yeah. Um, what is so different from the Quinns environment to the England that Eddie was running? I, I suppose is the question. Um, I think the main thing was that like we express ourselves in in a way of like if you if you want to do something, do it, and like, we'll just back you to the to to the nth degree. Like we'll just keep going. Yeah. Um, and the the. Um, emphasis on enjoyment was like the big part like just go out and, and have fun like enjoy yourself um, these are obviously the years of your life where you want to be playing um, you obviously want to be playing top level rugby and stuff like that but you, you want to be enjoying it and making memories and I think for us in some of the best parts especially those leading up to the final where we won it we literally will we were playing against teams and we were like, like we were playing at Bristol. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That right. um, no, that wasn't. Great game. But, <laughs> but coming, game. Into, coming into the change rooms and stuff afterwards, I spoke to like, to, to Malians and stuff like, to a couple of the boys and I was just like, like we'd already like planned for, if if we won, brilliant. Like this, we're on to the finals. This is great. But if not, then it's the start of our end of season. We've enjoyed it as a group that we've gone there. And so we had like, like loads of beers in the change rooms and like a big bus planned home, like for, for loads of drinks. And they were like, what? We're not drinking after this. We're not allowed to drink and stuff. I was like, like uh, just yeah, enjoy it. Know. Like, yeah, this yeah. is this is a big it's a big thing. So. Yeah, does Pat not let you drink? Well, Pat, yeah. It's just, he's a bit more disciplinary than that. Stop trying to get him fired every week. It just, that's how he is, mate. <laughs> it, I, I do find it funny, though. There's just all these different sort of approaches from coaches. But, like, what's well, sort of paradoxical? Like, like, you've collected the best players together, right? And then... They think they have to head fuck you and make you work the, as hard as you ever have possible. And I feel like surely they've honed their skill set by playing regularly in the Premiership already. Like what I hear about the camps and you see some of the boys that came back from those camps, they were just, they were so anxious, they hate it. Yeah, you've got like... They didn't like it at all. Rest. I'm like, you're trying to play for England yeah. and you, you're hating it. You're hating training. I just find it quite strange. Yeah, it's madness. Well, it's Danny it'd, Cipriani and he's be, saying exactly yeah. that. Like he just, yeah, didn't, like didn't I'm just see that sort of way of coaching as just being so I think quite it, old school. It gets some boys off, like those guys who like live in attrition. Like they love that currency of just tough and grit. But unfortunately, it's a team sport. Well, fortunately, it's a team sport as well. And like you got to be able. It's like horses for courses, isn't it? I reckon I'd like I'd like Quinns. I think that's the quick the quick yeah, way to the, the, the funner way though, isn't it? Yeah, Quinns is dreaming it. Eyes up, have a crack, everyone's laughing. No one bothers defending too much. Yeah, defence hasn't been too good this season. Well, I've heard I've heard about your defence training with your defensive coach in the gym where you tackle him onto some bags. Oh, and Tabs, yeah, yeah. We have um it, he loves Tabs loves it. He just Yeah, like, Tabs is Big on that. I had yeah. him a bath. He does the, the mats and he runs at you. Does oh, he do so that? Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll drop the How the good is that? But everyone does like <laughs> four hits every time you go in the gym. And he's running full <laughs> tilt and you're like, everyone's trying to bang him like, because that's what he wants you to do. Yeah. So you're doing that and it's like, he must be taking, how many hits is that? Like a, yeah, but a I'm lot. guessing you got the boys around like you yourself. Know, sometimes. Like, <laughs> it depends <laughs> who's tackling. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, um, I love it. I think Leicester do it, don't they? Where they do the, uh, it's like the tackle club or something like that, and you sprint full tilt and like whack each other. We did it on nah, England. Nah, you bit, don't but... need that. You don't need man, that. No, I, I mean, remember, doing, doing it to the coach. Man, it was enough. so funny because Tabs was getting like boys. We go to this like gymnastics club in Bath, right? And um, it was like pre season. And he'd get like a few of the big lads to run at like some of the backs to practice that that shot. But he was like, go on. And it was like Benno versus like Reese Priestland, like young Benno Abano, hungry as. It was the funniest thing to watch. He was just bumping everyone. Oh, and just horrible. No, Reese Priestland's like a 30-something 10 for Wales. He's like, I don't need this. Yeah. 
such as rugby. Have you heard much about the sort of culture and stuff over at Stade Francais? You, what, what is it, a similar way to Quinn's? You... I don't really know too much. Like, we, I've, I went over and I spoke to, obviously, Guzzi. I spoke to some of the other coaches and um, just, just like, just generic, like, rugby chat of, like, their kind of wh- where they want to where they want to be, where they see themselves. And they're having a great season at the moment. <laughs> Um, they spoke about obviously like the last couple of years where they've been um, just figuring stuff out and trying to get trying to get it right so they're the top of the French league. Um, but no, I don't know too much. I'm kind of going in it like like with a completely open mind. Um, oh, how good! Boys, but I'm excited. I'm really It'll excited. be so good. Yeah, that'd be mm-hmm. class. Down the Aaron yeah. Dismont. Because you called up with Zach Mercer, I think was it um, during the Barbers? Was how much? Did he give you into life in France, and how much was he like? You're gonna love it. Uh, he was like, yeah, it's great. He said the um, he said the environments and stuff are like are awesome, and just um, just to get amongst it. And he was like, we we spoke about the language barrier, and he was like, yeah, you just have to front it and just and just put yourself put yourself into it. Try and obviously be in as many conversations as you can. Um, but he was like, you're gonna absolutely love it. I think the the way they have like rugby as a spectacle in France is is so big like yeah. you see some of the French towns oh, La like La Rochelle, La Rochelle yeah, yeah like mental um, like they're they're such big occasions so I'm really excited to be yeah, uh, getting involved in that 